I consider myself to be very much an interdisciplinary academic, my three passions being business, health and uh, sustainability. These grand environmental challenges that we face cannot be viewed in isolation, they cut across every other um, problem that we, are, that we are facing and taking a sustainability lens to mental health gives us a whole new set of insights just as taking a, a mental health uh, perspective on sustainability gives us a whole new range of different, um, different insights. During heat waves, those with underlying psychiatric disorders, whether say an anxiety disorder, a depressive disorder, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia or similar, um, they experience a range of challenges. Um, rates of, of mortality go up, rates of suicide go up. Heat can trigger a, a relapse into certain phases of condition, such as in bipolar, switching into, into a manic phase. The way that some of these medications work can change slightly when the body is dehydrated. Um, the side effects can be exacerbated. So we found all of this out and we, we put a piece out. Just to be clear, that the research we've done so far has been the synthesis of other people's work. So we've been doing systematic literature review. The next phase of this research really is to speak to people and we'll be doing interviews shortly, interviewing people with, um, with underlying psychiatric disorders to understand their experience of, of heat waves and those in the UK who were present for the last heat wave to understand how that actually unfolded. The first thing about Oxford is just the, the passion that people have for their research. You can almost feel it. Um, that passion drives on everything that we do. You can have the best equipment in the world, the best um, access to, to data, uh, but what ultimately gets projects done is, is, that, is that passion, that drive, that desire to actually do stuff that has real world impact. Oxford allows you to be able to cut across um, the, these different disciplines and I think with, um, with brain and mental health we really need to understand that this, the answers to some of these massive questions that we're, that we're dealing with can't be solved using, um, using neuroscience, um, psychiatry and psychology. We have to be bringing in these other perspectives and we are doing that at the moment. I think the third thing really is the extent to which our teaching is, um, is research informed. We have um, these very, very um, best of the best at the very forefront of their fields, teaching students obviously the basics, we need to know that, but then bringing them right up to the forefront, to the cliff's edge of what we're doing in the, in the field and saying, okay, these are the questions that I'm grappling with at the moment in my research. Um, let's go through some possible answers here. The first thing I'd love to see, and this is a bit cliche to say, but a, a world where the stigma for mental health is removed. We've made some great progress this last decade, but there's still a very, very long way to go. So I'd like to see a world where we talk about someone having a, a, a certain phase of a bipolar disorder in the same way that we talk about someone having arthritis and that playing up, or someone being in a depressive phase and having to take a few days off work. Um, versus someone who's got influenza and is unable to come to work and actually seeing those things as being, as being equivalent. The first thing I'd say is embrace your intellectual curiosity. Be open to following some of those tangents that may come up along the way. You may have set off on a path and then realise that something actually much more interesting has come up. The second thing I'll say is, is, is collaborate. Um, find researchers who are doing what it is that you'd like to be doing. Um, learn from them, listen, ask some good questions ask them to be involved in, in things. No one's going to come along with a big platter and say, here's everything that you want, you've got to make it happen, you've got to get your name out there, you've got to be someone who's actually very proactive about driving it. There'll be a lot of mistakes, um, a lot of mishaps, a lot of things going wrong along the way. That's part of the process, um, embrace it. A doctorate is something you've really got to stick at. There's ups and downs along the way, and there'll be periods in the middle where you're like, really throwing in the towel, um, but it's a matter of perseverance, and there's a lot of really good things on the other side. I'd be piling resources into a couple of areas. The first of these would be bringing patients closer to research. Patient public involvement is so seminal to everything that we're doing. Patients are the only ones that have actually got to take these, um, uh, take these medications. The, the nuances of what it's like to, to swallow a tablet, to feel the side effects, are very, very hard to capture in a, in a dry, systematic um, and review and meta-analysis. And we see these great numbers, we see these forest plots, we see all these things around efficacy and tolerability, but there's nothing like supplementing that with lived experience of what, it, what it's actually like to have a mental health condition to take, um, to take medications.